This is the remainder and factor theorem. And then we're going to talk about the rational zero test. This is 2.3 part two. We talked yesterday about the remainder theorem. What's the only thing that matters with your remainder theorem? Remainder. The remainder, all right? So when you are given a question and it says evaluate, solve using the remainder theorem, you say F of whatever I use for synthetic division equals whatever the remainder is. Now, the factor theorem states that you can test whether something is a factor or not by using synthetic division. If the remainder is zero, then yes, it's a factor. It's a solution. It's a root. It's where it crosses the x-axis. So when you work out your synthetic division, if you get a remainder of zero, then you're like, oh, x equals two. That's true. Now, we're going to have problems today <clears throat> that are like x to the fifth, blah, 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 blah. That's going to say find all the zeros. Generally, the first thing we're going to do is try and factor it. If you can factor it, great. If you can't, you have to use this rational zeros test, which we're going to talk about. So in this case, <clears throat> it says to show that x minus 2 and x plus 3 are factors. The way that you would do that, that it says to factor the remaining. Okay, guys, look, if I gave you this problem and I said find all the zeros, first of all, how many zeros... How many X's do I have? Four. Okay, we're still talking about all the real stuff. We're not into imaginaries yet. So you should get four X equals. Now, if I said to you guys, okay, go ahead and solve this. You'd be like, what, huh? Is there a GCF? No. Can I group it? No. So this is where synthetic division comes into play. All right, this first example is just showing you kind of how this works. And then we're going to talk about something called P over Q. But in this case, they're telling you to prove that x minus 2 is a factor and x plus 3 is a factor. Well, the way that we would do that is we would use synthetic division and your remainder would be a what? If it's a factor, zero. zero. So the first thing I'm going to do is use x minus 2. So when I have x minus 2, in order to use synthetic division, I set it equal to zero. So in the corner, I put what number? Two. Perfect. So now we write out our coefficients. Can you guys read it to me, please? 2, 7, negative 4, negative 27, negative 18. Are there any gaps? No. Okay. So everything goes x to the fourth, then x cubed, then x squared, then x, then a constant. Okay. So we're going to bring down our first term, and we're going to synthetically divide. So what is 2 times 2? So we add down. 7 and 4 is 11. 11 times 2 is 22. Negative 4 and 22 is 18. Okay. You guys are a little hesitant there. 18. What's 18 times 2? 36. 36. What's negative 27 and 36? 9. nine. What's 9 times 2? What's 18 and negative 18? Yeah. Woo! We love when that happens. What you guys just proved was that X equals 2. That's one of your answers. So now you write your resulting polynomial. Well, if I started off with x to the fourth, this is x cubed, x squared, x, and a constant. I should not have a remainder. So I have 2x cubed plus 11x squared plus 18x plus 9. Now, before you do synthetic division again in, in our future problems here, I would check to see at this point if you can factor. There's no GCF. So just look at it, guys. If you grouped the first two and the second two, is that going to work? No. Because if I took out x squared, I'd have 2x plus 11. Then nothing's going to pull out. Give me 2x plus 11. So the next part of this question said, well, x plus 3 is also a factor. So what am I going to put in the corner if x plus 3 is also a factor? Yeah. Negative 3. And we're going to synthetically divide again. 2, 11, 18, and 9. So bring down your 2. What's 2 times negative 3? 11 and negative 6 is 5, right? 5 times negative 3 is 18, and negative 15 is, and then 3 times negative 3 is. So you just proved to me that what? That x equals negative 3. Okay, great. So how many more answers do I have? Two more. 
right? So this is an x squared. This is x, and that's your constant. So you have 2x squared plus 5x plus 3. After we use synthetic division once or twice, we hope to get to a point where we can just factor. Are we at that point? Yes. yes. What are factors of positive 6 that multiply to give me 6 but add to give me 5? Three and two. X plus three, X plus two. I understand why you guys say five and one, but we're trying to multiply to get six and add to get five, not the opposite way. <clears throat> so I have to realize that my A term here is not one. So I'm left with two X plus three and X plus one. So what are my two final zeros, my two final X's? X equals what? Negative 1 and negative 3 over 2. If you have to physically move the 3 over and divide by 2, do that. Don't make a silly mistake just because you want to look cool. How many answers do I have here? I have 4. Do I have any multiplicity? Nope. I see every th single x one time. So what's going to happen at the x-axis at each one of these zeros? It's going to cross through. Good. What's the end behavior of this graph? How do we find end behavior? It's falling left, right, and right. What kind of a number is four? Even. Even. Oh. So they're both going in which direction? Right. Rising left, rising right. Rising left, rising right. Yep. Yes, ma'am. You could have. <clears throat> mm -hmm. Can you show, show me again how you got rising, rising, rising? Sure. If this is the highest exponent is to the fourth power, yep. Yeah? Mm -hmm. So that means it's going to resemble at the ends of the graph a parabola, either a positive one or a negative one. Since 2x to the fourth is positive, it's going to resemble a positive parabola at the ends. So it's rising on the left hand side and it's rising on the right. You'd have to use the quadratic formula. Yeah, we're going to talk about that in a minute. <laughs> All right, so now we're going to talk about, this is exactly what I just talked about. If your remainder is zero, then it's a factor and all that good stuff. So now we're going to talk about the rational zero test. This is something we call P over Q to find all the rational zeros. P over Q. The way that you use P over Q, all right, say you have x to the fourth plus 6x squared minus 2x plus 8, whatever. <clears throat> P over Q. You have to list out all the possible zeros, the possible answers you could have. You're going to take the factors of your last term, which is the constant, so it would be 8, over the factors of the leading coefficient, which in this case is what? 1. For our class, your leading coefficient will always be 1. So you don't have to worry about fractions. All right, and Miss Boyd's pre-calc and higher math, this could possibly be like a 3. So then you have to worry about fractional kind of stuff. That will not be the case. So we're going to focus on just the last term. And all we're going to do today, guys, is repeated synthetic division until we can break our polynomial down into something we know how to factor. All right, when I say rational zero test or P over Q, this is what I'm talking about. We're going to do a bunch of examples. It says find the rational zeros. What does that mean? It means solve it. What does X equal? Well, in this case, I look at this problem and I say, okay, it's X to the third power. Yeah. So how many answers should I have? Three. I should have three. So the first thing you should do every single time, don't just jump to synthetic division. See if you can factor it. Is there a GCF? No. no. Can I group this? Can I group the first two and the second two and find some sort of common parenthesis? No. no. So this is where we have to do P over Q. And like I just said, one will always be our Q. So you don't have to worry about fractions or anything. You're going to take the last term. What is the last term? Negative 20. Don't worry about the sign because you're always going to account for the plus and minus. What are the factors? What times what gives me 20? 1, 2, 4, 
5, 10, and 20, right? Now, we're going to guess and check with synthetic division to find what will give us 0 as a remainder. Some of you are like, ugh. I personally always start with 1. If 1 doesn't work, I go to negative 1. Then I go to 2. Some of you are going to want to jump around. I don't suggest jumping around because A, you guys get lost, and B, you can get yourself frustrated. Just be methodical with whatever you do. Whatever you decide to start with, just do it every time. Yes, sir? Why do you put the Because it could be a combination of a positive. It could be a positive 1 is your x value. It could be a negative 1. Could be a positive two, could be a negative two. So you always account for plus and minus. So I'm going to start with just one, and I'm just going to synthetically divide until I get a remainder of what? Zero. So what are my coefficients? 1, 8, 11, negative 20. 1, 8, 11, negative 20. Do you guys understand the importance of making sure your signs are right? You drive yourselves crazy if you miss a sign. I would not try to go too quickly when you're doing this because you don't want to make a silly mistake, but you bring your first term down, which is 1. 1 times 1 is 1. 8 plus 1 is 9. 9 times 1 is 11 plus 9 is? Oh, good. 20 times 1 is? What's negative 20 and positive 20? Zero. Zero. So we lucked out. In the first try, that worked. So what did you guys just prove to me with that little bit of math? x equals 1 is one of my answers. It's one of my zeros. So now, can you write your resulting polynomial? What do we have left? This is x squared, x, and your constant, right? So you have 1x squared plus 9x plus 20. We're trying to solve this. You can use synthetic division again, but before you guys do that, before you jump to that, I would try to factor. Are there factors of 20 that will multiply to give you 20 and add to give you 9? Yes. What are they? So plus 4 and plus 5. So what are your other two x values? Negative 4, negative 5. So you have to use this rational zero test to get that polynomial that is either a cubic that won't group or anything or something that's bigger to the fourth power, fifth power that you have to break down to something that you can manage. Now, if you get to this point, Martin, you just asked this question. Say you get to this point, and this was an 8 here. So it doesn't factor. What would you have to use? The quadratic formula. Yeah. Yes, yes, yes. Question. So if I can group so they can factor in groups, and if not, then I have to do... Yep. Okay. Wait. Yep. So you only do some data division once? Sometimes you have to do it more than once. When is that? When, when do you know to do that? Or like once you, when you get here, good question. Say you get here and you're like, okay, it it's, doesn't factor. Say it's to the, to cubed because if it doesn't factor here, you just use quadratic. But say it's cubed and it doesn't break down anyway. You can't um, group it or anything like that. Then you do synthetic division again to try and break it down again. Because sometimes this is where like multiplicity is hidden. You might use one again and, you, and one works again. It's just those bigger polynomials that you guys can't see right off the bat. <clears throat> when do you stop doing synthetic? When you can factor it. Okay. Or solve it. Once you get to a quadratic, once you get to x squared, you either factor it or quadratic formula. Okay. So if we have to do synthetic again, we can divide by 1 then? It's always going to be 1. It, your first term will always be 1. No, I mean like... Yeah, you can do 1 again. Okay. Yeah. Hypothetically speaking, good question. Say this, it's not this one, but this worked out that you use factors of 20 again. And you had 1, negative 1. Yes, you can get 1 again because what happens when you have the same answer more than once? What do we call that? Multiplicity, right? That, that'll happen. All right, let's do another one. They're not awful, I promise. All right, find all the zero. That means solve this. Factor it if you can. Is there a GCF? No. No. Can you group? No. So that means we have to do what? Synthetic division. You take the factors of the last term. So I have plus or minus. You always account for both. So I have 1, 2, 3, and 6. And you just use your synthetic division. As soon as you guys see a number's not going to work, go to the next one. So I have 1. 1, 2, negative 5, negative 6. So 
one, two, negative five, negative six. Bring down your one. What's one times one? One. Two plus one is three. Three times one is negative five and three is? Is this going to work? Go to the next one. Now, don't just assume, guys, that since one didn't work, negative one won't. All right? Some of you get, okay, then I'm going to try two. I just would not do that. I would try a number and then it's opposite. So I have one, two, negative five, and six. Thank you. Makes a big deal. So bring down the one. One times negative one is negative one. Two and negative one is one. One times negative one. Negative one. What's negative five and negative one? Negative six. Guys, what's negative six and negative one? Six. What's negative six and six? Zero. What'd you just prove? X equals negative one. One of your X intercepts, one of your zeros, one of your solutions, one of your roots, however you want to say it, is X equals negative one. So with what you have left over, you have X squared, X, and your constant. You guys are left with X squared plus X minus six equals zero. Now we're at the stage where we're left with a quadratic. When you are left with a quadratic, you got two options. It's either A, you're gonna factor, or B, you use the quadratic formula. Don't just jump to the quadratic formula. See if it factors. Are there factors of negative six that multiply to give you negative six, but add to give you one? Three. What kind of three, what kind of two? X plus three, X minus two. So your other two X values are negative three and positive two. Is this incredibly difficult? No. no. Again, is it another thing that's kind of a pain in the butt? Yes. yes. I understand that, but that's okay. It's okay. All right, let's do this one. Find the rational zeros. <clears throat> Solve it. How many answers should I have here? Four. Four. All right. Is there a GCF? No. No. Can I group it? No. No. So take the last number, 12. Plus, minus, one, two, three, four, six, 12. Whole bunch of things. I'm going to start with one. You guys want to start with something else? That's fine. I'm going to start with one. 1, negative 4, negative 13, positive 4, and 12. Make sure there's no gaps. Make sure everything's accounted for. And then go ahead and start your synthetic division. As soon as you see it doesn't work, go to the next one. So 1 times 1 is 1. Negative 4 and 1 is negative 3. Negative 3 and 1 is negative 3. Negative 13 and negative 3 is negative 16. Negative 16 and 1 is neg. Is this going to work? Yeah. No. Okay, good. Negative 16 and 4 is negative 12. And negative 12 and 1 is negative 12. Good. What's 12 and negative 12? Zero. Perfect. So you guys found out that x equals 1. Is x going to equal 1 every time? No. So what you have left over with, this is cubed, squared, x, constant. So... 1x cubed minus 3x squared minus 16x minus 12. Can we solve this? Can we group it? Okay, let's group it. What can you take out? Okay, take out an x squared, and I'm left with x minus 3. What can you take out here? Negative 4, and you're left with x plus 3. Uh-oh. Does this one group? Is it real close to grouping? Yeah, it's really close. How annoying. So what do we do? If it doesn't group, I can't factor it. And it's not a quadratic, so I can't use the quadratic formula. What do I have to do? Synthetic, Synthetic division again. The exact same way we just did it, now you just use the blue polynomial. So again, we still have 12. So plus, minus, 1, 2, 3, 4, 6, and 12. But my new coefficients are 1, negative 3, negative 16, negative 12. 1, negative 3, negative 16, negative 12. 
Remember I told you, as soon as you figure out one doesn't work, stop. But don't give up too early, like some of you just did a second ago. And I was like, oh, is this going to work? No, go to the next one. Yeah, it worked. <clears throat> All right, start with one again. Again, Taylor just asked, can you really have one again? Absolutely. In some cases, you might have the same x value three times. That's just multiplicity. So if we start with positive one, bring down the one. One times one is one. Negative three and one is negative two. Negative two and one is negative two. Negative 16 and negative 2, is, is this going to work? No. No. Okay, so let's try negative 1. 1, negative 3, negative 16, negative 12. 1 times negative 1, negative 1. Negative 3 and negative 1 is negative 4. Negative 4 and negative 1 is 4. Negative 16 and 4 is negative 12. What's negative 12 negative 1? 12. What's negative 12, positive 12? Zero. Does this one work? Yeah. So another one of your answers is x equals negative 1. Is that multiplicity? No. no. Negative 1 and positive 1 are two different places on your axis. So with what's left over, I have x squared, x, and a constant. So I have x squared minus 4x minus 12. Again, when you guys get to this point of a quadratic, two, cho two choices. Either A, it'll factor, or B, you have to use the quadratic formula. Does this factor? Please, 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 please. Yes, yes it does. What are the factors of negative 12? That'll multiply to give you negative 12, but add to give you negative 4. X minus 6, X plus 2. Great. So what are your two values here? All right. So what are my two other X values here? Positive 6, negative 2. So if you guys were asked to graph this, you should be able to. Where is this going to cross the x-axis? What four places? Negative 2, negative 1, positive 1, and 6. Does it go through each of those, or does it touch and turn? Why does it go through? Multiplicity of 1. It's an odd number of multiplicity. Good. What's the end behavior of this graph? Rising left, rising right. It's an even, right? So you know that both are either going up or both are going down. Since it's positive, they're both going up. <clears throat> so you guys can tell all of that stuff just by looking at it. All right, let's look at this one. Again, we're finding all the zeros. I first, I'm like, oh, is this a, oh, no, I can't factor it, right? Because it's a cubic. Can you just stick this into the quadratic formula? No, because it's x cubed. God bless. So it's not going to group. It's not going to factor. So we have to do our synthetic division. Well, this is nice when our last term is 1, <laughs> right? So I'm going to try 1 first. The coefficient of x cubed is 1. The coefficient of x squared is? Zero. Good. Zero. What's the coefficient of x? 1, and then our constant. So let's synthetically divide. What's 1 times 1? One? 1. What's 0 plus 1? One? 1. What's 1 times 1? One? 1. What's 1 plus 1? Two. 2. What's 2 times 1? Two. 2. What's 1 plus 2? That doesn't help, does it? No. No, that's not a factor. So let's try negative 1. So I get 1, 0, 1, 1 again. What's 1 times negative 1? Negative 1. What's 0 and negative 1? What's negative 1 and negative 1? 1. 1. What's 1 plus 1? 2 times negative 1. Does this one work? No. Nope. So are there any rational zeros here? No. So you would say no rational zeros. That doesn't happen a lot. Now, <clears throat> there's one more example on your notes. Um, that I did with a period or whatever was first I today it's that long one right to so the fifth power and none of them work <laughs> I was driving myself crazy I'm like does this I I grabbed an example where I did every single synthetic division from one to ten and none of them worked so that was fun super fun Let's look at the next one I have a bunch of examples here so I think one or two repeats from before <clears throat> but this is for you guys to practice if you want me to do one, 
I will do one with you right now if you want to. If not, you guys can just practice on your own. Let me do one of them. But I will post these answers um, as soon as I'm done talking. So you guys, if you want to practice one or two of them on your own, you're more than welcome to. It's just some extra practice on this lovely, this lovely thing we call synthetic division and repeated. Yeah, sure. So if you look at this first one, all right, how many answers should I have? Four. Four. I should have four. It's not going to group. I can't take out a GCF, so then I have my factors of 12. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 6, and 12. So I'm going to start my synthetic division with 1. So 1, 2, negative 7, 1, 2, negative 7, negative 8, and 12. Remember, as soon as 1 doesn't work, go to the next one. So bring down your 1. 1 times 1 is 1. 2 plus 1 is 3. 3 times 1 is 3. Negative 7 and 3 is negative 4. Negative 4 and 1 is negative 4. Negative 8 negative 4 is negative 12. What's negative 12 times 1? Negative 12, so this becomes 0. So, okay, awesome. This one works. x equals 1 is the solution. So now we're left with, this is cubed, squared, x, and a constant. So I have x cubed plus 3x squared minus 4x minus 12 equals 0. Now sometimes, guys, this will group and be nice and pretty and make your life easy. Sometimes it won't, and you have to do synthetic division again. But before you just jump to that, I would try to see if you could factor it. If you factor by grouping here... Can you take anything out of x cubed and 3x squared? What? X squared. Take out your x squared. You're left with x plus 3. What can you take out of negative 4x and negative 12? Negative 4 you're left with. x plus 3. Good. So you now see that that one grouped. If you were to just jump and go to synthetic division, that would work as well. It's just I'd save yourself the trouble if you don't have to. So if we go continue to solve, this is x plus 3 and then x squared minus 4, correct? Mm -hmm. Now, you can break down x squared minus 4. If I were you, I would, just because some of you will take the square root of 4 and tell me it's 2. But what is your answer, really? Positive, Positive and negative. Remind yourself, I should have four answers. Well, I have one right here. So this is x plus 3. This breaks down to x minus 2 and x plus 2. So you have three more zeros here, one at negative 3, one at 2, and one at negative 2. Now, again, you could have to where this didn't group and you had to do synthetic division again. You can have the same x value appear more than once. It's just called multiplicity. Or you can have them where they don't work at all and you're just like, oh, wait, I don't have any. Or where they come out to be gross, like 2 plus or minus the square root of 5, you know, something like that. But I will post these answers right now. Um, along with this video and then you guys can practice more so come to class tomorrow with questions about p over q stuff anything on the review all that sort of stuff just come to class so you guys are ready for your quiz on friday